what to expect on your first day in the Universal Orlando Parks. It's day seven of your seven days to a better Universal Orlando vacation. Welcome to episode seven of the Go Inform podcast. It's day seven, you guys, day seven of your seven days to a better Universal Orlando vacation. And today is your first day in the parks. That's what we're going to be talking about. I'm your hostess, Maven, and I'm really excited to share some tips for what to expect and things you can do to get ready for your first day in the parks at Universal Orlando. Thanks again for joining me for these seven days. Um, I hope that this has helped you guys get ready for your trip and get excited about going to Universal. So I have a whole bunch of notes here today of tips that um, you can use to be prepared for your um, day in the parks. And the truth is that this topic could be a whole podcast by itself, um, multiple, multiple episodes. And in the end, it probably will be because um, there's going to be lots of future episodes going into a lot more depth about these topics. But I really want you to at least have a basic idea of some of the top tips that can help you kind of quick and dirty uh, information to help you get out there and have fun at the parks, even if you don't have time to listen to many, many episodes of a podcast. So of uh, the basic topics we're going to talk about today are being prepared, tips that you can use to avoid the crowds, and things you can expect to buy when you get to the parks, and some basic theme park touring tips. Okay, so the first place we want to start is um, to, for you to have a plan or know what your plan is. So a couple of really basic things that this means is what time does the park open and which park are you going to start at for your day? So know where you're going before you leave your hotel room. Really know where you're going to be going before you go to bed the night before <laughs> because that's going to save you a whole lot of hassle in the morning and time. So this is something that you can plan for way in advance. Um, the park hours are, don't usually change at Universal Orlando. So even if you look a couple months ahead, it's probably going to stay the same. So have an idea of which park you're going to go to first, what time you need to be there, and um, what you're going to do when you first get there. Okay, so let's talk about getting there. First of all, the best tip I can give you for touring any theme park is to be there first. So that means getting there early. So uh, if a park says that it's opening at nine o'clock in the morning, it probably means that they're going to start letting people in at about 845. It also means that people will start lining up to go into the parks at least by 830, if not earlier. So uh, my advice is to always try to arrive at the park about 30 minutes or more before the park opening time. If you get there at the time that the park's supposed to open, it will already be opened and there will already be a bunch of people in the park and you might as well have just slept in longer. <laughs> so don't do that. Either sleep in or get up early and get there because the thing is, the thing that my daughter and I say all the time is that with the theme parks, if you're not first, you're last. So be first, you guys. You can do so much more if you get there first and you're one of the first people through the turnstiles. So make sure you know how long it's going to take you to get to the park gate from wherever it is you're coming from. If you're staying on site, what our routine is that we leave our room an hour before the park opening. And usually that means we're one of the first at the turnstile. So our usual plan is that if the park opens at nine o'clock, we leave our room at eight o'clock and we are usually one of the first at the turnstiles. 
This is a really good way to beat the crowds. If you're staying off site, you make sure that you know how long it's going to take you to get to Universal. And then you need to add some time to get from your parking, from the parking garage to the gates. Um, it's kind of a walk. So, um, you know, allow like 15 or 20 minutes to get to the gate once you're parked um, and, you know, at Universal. So I know this means getting up early and especially if you're like us, we come from the West Coast time zone. It's pretty brutal getting up in time. And also if you have early admission, just back this up another hour because it goes, the same thing goes for showing up for early admission. You need to get there at least 30 minutes before that early admission time because they will open the gates 15 minutes before the stated time. So it's the same way. You're going to have to get up early. Uh, we have developed some, I think, pretty good hacks for dealing with the mornings when we're doing this. And I've uh, got a whole post about it. And I've actually um, talked about it on another podcast. And it will definitely be a topic of a future episode on this podcast. So make sure you subscribe. <laughs> um, but I do have a post on the website about um, early wake up tips. Um, I'll make sure and put that in the show notes for this episode, which by the way, you can get that at goinform.net slash seven or just look in your whatever podcasting app you are listening to this from. So yeah, getting up early is a tricky thing, um, but it is totally, totally worth it, you guys. So just take my advice and at least try it one morning. Try it one morning. Try it your first day. You're going to be excited anyway. So just get up and go. It's really, it's totally worth it. So, um, and then once you get into the park, it's important to know where you're going to be going. So if you are coming in during the early admission time, you don't really have any choice there. You'll just sort of be corralled um, through a certain route and you're going to end up at, in the wizarding world. And uh, so that part you don't have to worry about. However, you still need to know where you're going to go first when you get into that part of the park. So have a have a sense of do you want to do the Ollivander's wand shop first? Do you want to um, go on the big ride, the Forbidden Journey ride in the castle or the Gringotts Bank ride, depending on which park you're in? So have an idea about this before you get in the park. And again, we talked about it yesterday um, in terms of preparation. This is something you should be figuring out way in advance and make sure that whoever you're traveling with is on the same page because that's just exhausting if you have to spend time trying to argue about what to do now when you're already there. So figure that out ahead of time. A couple other things too, in terms of when you first get into the park, some advice I would give you in terms of what not to do. Don't go shopping and don't stop and eat unless you're not intending to ride any of the major rides then, you know, and you're just in there to eat and shop. That's one thing. But for most of us, it's all about getting on those big rides and doing it before the lines are long. So save the other stuff, the shopping and the, um, and uh, the, you know, having food and stuff, save that for a different time. You will have plenty of time for that later. Um, so just know where you're going and head straight there. In terms of eating, though, I should say that it definitely helps if you have something to eat before you get on these big rides. So what we do is when we head to the park, we actually stop along the way uh, at whatever the Starbucks or whatever it is in the hotel and grab a cup of coffee and something to eat. I'm usually just, you know, we're usually not super hungry because of our, our jet lag and stuff, but um, we try to at least get a bagel or a croissant or a muffin or something and just share it. And we'll just have the coffee and have something on the way to the park. So by the time we get through the gate, we our stomach's not empty. Um, because riding these intense rides on an empty stomach could set your whole day just sideways. Um, so do 
figure out a way that you can get something to eat. And that's another thing that's in my tips for the morning. Um, Room service is a really good option sometimes for this. So uh, check out that post. I've got some tips about that. Okay, so a little bit about actually going into the park. Um, Just if you haven't been to a theme park in a long time, the system for getting into the gates might seem a little bit weird. So I sort of want you to know about this before you're going through the line. So when you enter the park, you're going to need two things. You're going to need your park ticket and you're going to need your finger. Because what's going to happen is the person that's manning the gate, um, the turnstile, is going to take your park ticket and scan it. And then they're going to scan your fingerprint. So um, just so you know, it's no big deal or anything, but it it might seem weird if you haven't been um, through one of these gates where they do this. So um, do think about which finger you're going to scan because what happens, you just sit, put your finger on a fingerprint scanner and then it keeps it in the system. I think they do this so that you can't, you know, go out and give your pass to someone else. It's They know it's you. So um, when you do this, though, every time you come into the park using that ticket, you're going to have to scan your finger. So remember which finger it was. <laughs> Because if you can't remember, then you're going to have to keep trying different fingers. So just a quick tip there. Um, Be aware that that's just part of getting through the gate. Um, One other thing that I have to say about Universal is sometimes their scanners don't work. And it can be very frustrating when you're there first. Um, But they will get you through the gate. So don't panic um, if they're if they're reader isn't working, they'll figure out a way to make sure that you get in. Now, if you have early admission into the parks, you're going to need something else with you as well. And that's your room key. They won't ask for your room key when you go through the turnstile. But once you get past the kind of the main, um, the little main entrance part of the park, some employees from Universal will be standing there and they will ask you to show them your room key. And you don't have to stop and have them scan it or anything like that, but you do need to hold it up so they can see it. You can, almost, a lot of times you can just hold it up while you're walking so you don't have to stop. Um, but have it handy because if you have to stop and pull it out of a bag or, it, and worst case, do not leave it in your room because they won't let you have the early admission unless you show your room key. So make sure you have your room key handy uh, and out. And that's the only time of the day that they're going to ask you for that. So then you can put it away wherever you want. But um, know that you need to have that in order to have access into the early admission part of the park. Okay, so um, that brings me to something that you're probably going to want to buy when you get to the park. And that is a lanyard to hold your room key and your uh, park ticket. Um, you can bring a lanyard that you have from somewhere else, you know, with you if you want, but it's kind of cool to get, that's a cool souvenir is to get a universal themed lanyard. You can get, you know, a one that says Ravenclaw, or you can get one with minions or whatever. And they're like, they're less than $10. So this is, a um, something that you might want to just keep in mind that something that you might want to buy on your first day at the parks. And what we do is we keep our park ticket, our room key, and our express pass all in the lanyard. And you then you can just flash the express pass from, you know, you have it around your neck. So it's really easy when you're getting on the rides. And having the park ticket right there around your neck is easy too when you're hopping between the parks because you can just uh, hand it to the uh, guest uh, services person while you're getting into the park. And you don't have to worry about it falling out of your pocket or... Um, fumble with trying to get it out every time that you're making these um, moves where you need to show it. So definitely consider um, that as part of your first day shopping for a lanyard. Okay, so we're still, um, I'm still want to give you a little bit more information about this sort of what it's like when you first come in the park and you're one of the first ones in there. So one of the things that can really pay off if if you're trying to 
really be like one of the first people on the ride in the morning is being able to walk fast. So in your training, as I talked about yesterday, where you're going to be doing a lot of walking to get ready for this, if you really want to get serious, practice walking fast (laughs) because there's no running but they'll sure let you walk fast. And I'll tell you what, my daughter Luna, she can walk faster than I think I could run. And she beats the crowds every time. And I'm always like, playing catch up. It's it's kind of crazy. But, um, but if you can walk fast, you can be the first person on the ride for sure. And um, it's, uh, it, it's kind of that is kind of fun. So just a little tip. If you want to be first on the ride, be fast. Oh, and incidentally, I have a video of us being first on the Gringotts Bank ride um, from a couple of years ago. And uh, that's a really fun preview, too, of what you can expect when you walk through Universal Studios Florida with early admission. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes. So as your day progresses, there's a few tips that I have for making um, the most of the day. And the first one It might seem counterintuitive to this whole sort of power touring thing, but one of the most important things is to take breaks. So make sure that you are giving yourself time to just stop and sit down for a few minutes, have a snack, have water, make sure that you're um, staying hydrated. And really, this goes for any time of year. I mean, obviously, when it's really hot, you need to do that, but If even if it's a cold day, you're doing a lot of physical activity here that you don't even really realize what you're putting your body through sometimes on some of these rides. So make sure that you're, um, you know, having some snacks, keeping your blood sugar up and um, having drinks, having water, whatever. Um, You are going to find out when you get to Universal Orlando that you can have beer if you want. You can carry it around. Um, I've seen people drinking it while they're waiting in line. I don't really recommend that because the rides are already disorienting enough that I'm not sure that throwing some beer on top of that is a good idea. That's your option. You can, you can do whatever you want. But uh, I kind of recommend saving that for later uh, when you aren't going to be riding on some of these extreme rides. Um, and stick, you know, have water, drink your water. Okay. Also, um, it, I suggest that you unplug and stay off your phone as much as you can. I mean, you're going to use it to take pictures and. It's uh, going to be a reference for you f- as you're touring through the park. So I'll get to that in a second. But um, but do try to not spend all your time like checking your Facebook page and stuff. I mean, you can do that at home. This is all about being in the moment and being in the place. And so do your best to not spend a bunch of time on your phone. Okay, now that said, you are going to want to check a few things on your phone as you're going through the parks. And one of them is the weather forecast. So keep an eye on um, whatever weather app you use. I use the Weather Channel app. um, But, you know, have an app on your phone where you can get an hour by hour forecast, because this is going to help you figure out if you're going to if the rain's going to come in and affect your day. So if it rains, you're already going to have a poncho because we talked about that yesterday. But um, it will affect some of the rides, Uh, the big roller coasters, anything that's outside is probably going to be closed during a big rainstorm. And especially if there's lightning, a lot of stuff will close. So take a look at the forecast and um, adjust your planning in terms of what you want to do based on that, because it may mean that you want to ride the roller coaster sooner in case it starts to rain later. Um, so be aware of that. 
And then, of course, the other thing that you're going to find um, is very useful on your phone is going to be um, the apps that show you the line wait times for the rides. So the Universal app is um, really good for this. The other app that uh, we use constantly is called Lines. It's from touringplans.com. And um, it's a free app that you can pick up in um, the App Store. Uh, you can pay a small fee and unlock all the features of it, which I highly recommend. I mean, it will give you recommendations for what time of day to ride a certain ride and um, to avoid crowds. It's super, super helpful. Um, and as you're going through the park, it's really nice to be able to just glance uh, at at the app and see which rides have a long line and which have a short line and make your next decision about what to ride next or what to ride later in the day based on, you know, some real real time information. So you will be using your phone for that stuff. Make sure you charged your phone. I didn't mention that on yesterday's episode, but um, you're going to want a full battery when you're doing this kind of touring because you will use it for pictures and you will use it for these apps. Okay, and then zip it in your pocket <laughs> and ride the rides and don't worry about what's going on on Instagram. And as you're looking at those ride times too, keep in mind, assuming that you have a two park um, ticket that will allow you into both Universal Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios Florida on the same day, that if it looks like the rides are really crowded on um, in the park that you're in right now, but they're not crowded or they're less crowded in the other park, consider switching parks. It's not a big deal to, um, to go between the two parks. You can ride the Hogwarts Express between the two parks, or you can just go out the front gate and go in the other one, um, in their front gate. So um, just keep that in mind. You have the entire thing available to you and you can go wherever you think is going to be the um, best choice for you in the moment. All right, a couple other things that are really useful in some of this I talked about yesterday, but for your first day, one, make sure the shoes you wear are good for walking a long distance. So um, I know that depends on you and what how your feet are. My feet, that means running shoes. I mean, uh, I think if you can run a marathon in those shoes, then you can do a day or two. Or again, you have to think about multiple days here um, often when you're theme park touring. So make sure you're wearing shoes that are going to be supportive, comfortable, um, and get you through all the distance and time that you're going to be spending on your feet today. Also, carrying a backpack is really useful because you're probably also going to need to bring sunscreen. Um, You might be carrying a water bottle. You might, if it's a cold weather time of year, you might want to bring gloves and a hat. And even in Florida, there are times when you're going to want this in the evening or early morning. So a backpack is really great because you can just keep it with you. And when you need it, you have it. And um, again, a poncho is Uh, You have to have it almost any time of year. So that's another thing that you can have um, easily that you're carrying around in a backpack. And another thing about carrying stuff around in the parks that um, is a little bit different at Universal than it is at, for instance, at Disney World. Many of the rides at Universal require you to put your stuff in a locker before you get on the ride. Um, this includes the major Harry Potter rides, the roller coasters, uh, just a lot of the rides have this. So the lockers are free and they are usually located right by the entrance to the ride. There's uh, it depends on the ride. Sometimes it's sort of n- neighboring the entrance or whatever. If you can't find the um, area for the lockers, any of the um, park uh, employees can help you get there. But just know that you're going to have to put your stuff in a locker. And actually, that's another reason a backpack's nice because you can kind of keep it all in one thing. And then when you go to the locker, you just put it all in and you don't have to, you know, 
rummage around and try to remember, did, did I put my hat in there, whatever. But they're going to have you put anything that basically anything that you're carrying is going to have to go in a locker. It, so if you can't like zip it into pockets, it'll have to go in the locker. And some of the rides, basically it's the big roller coaster rides, they will have you put everything in a locker, including your phone, um, Then and they will send you through a metal detector to make sure you don't have anything. So just be aware that lockers are part of the process when you're riding um, many of the rides at Universal. And this might seem like a hassle, but in the end, I've, I've gotten used to it and I actually find it really convenient because when you get in the ride, you don't have to try to figure out how to secure all your stuff. Um, there's, you know, you're not dealing with any stuff. It's just, you just got it yourself. So uh, it actually, I find it makes the rides a little more enjoyable because I'm not worried about something falling out of my bag when I'm on the roller coaster or anything like that. It's because it's all safely in the locker. And the lockers, like I said, they're, they give you plenty of time, um, free time on the locker. So you can put your stuff in there. You can be in line, even if the lines are really long. Um, you won't be charged for having your stuff in the locker. And then when you get off the ride, you can just go and get it out and head to the next place. Okay, a couple other things um, to expect and to just know about during the day. One is wash your hands a lot. Um, you know, you're touching all these rides that a million other people are touching. And um, it's a lot of close quarters. So really is helpful to everyone if we all wash our hands. But I just always feel like I need to wash my hands a lot. Um, and I also carry antibacterial wipes or you might carry Purell with you. Um, that uh, that's kind of a necessary thing when you're at a theme park. So just know that you're probably going to spend some time doing that. Also, um, a heads up about Universal's rides. I talked a little bit about this when we did our virtual tour of the parks, but pretty much every single ride at Universal in either Islands of Adventure or Universal Studios Florida has water at some point in the ride. I, and I mean, like every ride, it's hard for me to think of any that doesn't, whether it's a big splash ride or just a spritz that comes in your face. But just heads up, there's always some water. It's kind of a fun game to try to figure out uh, when you're going to get the water um, if you haven't been in the ride before. So look for that. Another thing to be aware of is um, parades. So in um, Universal Studios Florida, there is a character parade that usually happens at least once a day. And if there's a parade going, um, it can mean that you can't cross certain streets. It makes it a little tricky for getting around sometimes, especially if you're kind of in a rush and you're trying to get from one side of the park to the other. So take a look at the um, the app uh, or uh, any kind of a, a information that you're getting about the park for that day and see when the parade is happening. And on the park map, it actually tells you what the parade route is. So you can be aware that if you're going to want to cross that parade route during the time of the parade, you may not be able to. So that's just one of those veteran pieces of advice from someone who's been stuck behind a parade too many times. If you're not into the parade, then you may want to uh, just you still want to know when it is happening so that you can avoid it. Okay, and then another thing about your day is, of course, you're going to get hungry. There's tons of great treats in all the both the parks. Um, so have fun snacking. In terms of like a main meal, we actually uh, often will leave the park for lunch. Um, it's... There's not, I, I can't say there's any one restaurant in either of these two parks that I would definitely ed say that you should go eat at. Um, this is different from Disney World, where I think there's some really great restaurants in the parks. Um, Universal hasn't caught up with that yet, in my opinion. So it's fine if you just want to get fast food or whatever. But if you want to like sit down and kind of take a break and have a decent, you know, real meal, um, we recommend either 
heading to City Walk, which is the um, shopping and restaurant little kind of neighborhood that's right outside the two parks entrances or going over to one of the resort hotels that's right there on site. Um, One thing you're going to find is that if you go over to one of the hotels and eat in their restaurant, nobody's going to be in there. Like you'll have the whole place to yourself. You won't have to wait around. It will be nice and cool and air conditioned and it will and you can escape the crowds for a while. So that's something that we've done before that's been really, really great. Um, you can if you're staying on site, another thing you can do is you can go back to your room for lunch and just get room service or bring um, like grab a sandwich from, you know, the deli in the hotel or whatever and bring it into your room and have lunch in your room. And then you get to lay down, take off your shoes and stretch out for a while. This is really a great way to take a break. Um, but just make sure if you're planning to go back to the parks that you really do because um, the temptation when you go to your room is just to stay there. And that's... um. That's not why you came to Orlando. So use that advice with just that caveat. Um, In terms of like eating in City Walk, there's lots of fun places to eat there. Just tons of restaurants. Um, None of them are going to be super crowded at lunch, I don't think. Um, We like the Hard Rock restaurant, which is right outside the gates. It's like in between the two parks and it's giant it's a really fun theming in there and they have good food. So that's a fun place to go. And there's also this um, chocolate emporium place that's right uh, next to the Hard Rock, which is really cool and has amazing milkshakes. So that's another option. So don't be afraid to leave the parks to have lunch or dinner. It's um, It can be a really good way to take a break and still stay close by to um to head back in later for more of your park time okay so let me see on my notes here i have a note to let you know that one of the things i really recommend buying at universal is the interactive wand that you can get for the wizarding world of harry potter so this allows you to do magic really do magic when you're in diagon alley or in hogsmeade village And it really, it's super fun. It so adds to the atmosphere of this part of the park um, to see people doing spells. And and it's really fun to be part of it. So I recommend um, getting at least one of these wands for your group. You don't not necessarily have to have one for every person, but you can. Um, There's a lot of different style wands and they're all right they're copies of the characters from the stories. So like I have Dumbledore's Elder Wand, which is awesome. Um, But you can also have Harry's Wand or Hermione's Wand or many of the other characters' wands. And they are these interactive magical wands that really do do spells in um, the wizarding world. And they cost about $50. And they actually last a long time too. So if you're thinking you're going to visit Universal again in the next couple years, you can bring it back and it will still work. Um, We've done that before and the batteries seem to last a long time. So it doesn't have to be a one-time use kind of thing. And again, I just think it's a really neat thing. So if there's any souvenir that you're going to splurge on, just a heads up, I, I think that that's a cool one to um, to think about getting. Another thing that you can purchase when you're at um, Universal is a photo package. And this is really going to be up to you as to whether it's worth it or not. But you can prepay um, for a photo package that lasts either one day or three days, um, depending on how long your trip is. And it's just a flat amount that you pay. And then it includes um, ride photos from any of the rides. I think any of the rides except the Rip Ride Rocket. I'm pretty sure that one's its own thing. But 
Um, so the uh, the Forbidden Journey ride for Harry Potter, the Mummy ride, um, the Hulk coaster. Um, there's quite a few of them that have photos on the ride. And if you like ride photos, this is actually probably a better deal for you um, because it's like, uh, let me see, it's like $70 for one day. So that may not be, but um, it's $90 for a three day package. And if you figure that each one of those ride photos is like $15 or something, and you want to have, you know, a couple of them a day, then it might make sense to get the photo package. Um, It's nice to know about this in advance, because then you don't have to figure it out right when you get there. You can purchase it in advance and save a little bit of money. There's a lot of things that you get with this package. And I'm not going to spend a bunch of time right now talking about it. But there is an awesome, awesome post about this on orlandoinformer.com. And so I will put a link to that in the show notes. So you can, if you're interested, or you want to know more about this, you can get over there and read it. Um, They've, they give you all the details and um, it can help you decide if you want to get the photos. Um, But I think ride photos are super fun. They're one of my favorite souvenirs. So uh, just so you know, that is something that you can get when you're in the parks. Okay, so a couple other tips. This is like the longest episode ever. Like I said, this is going to be an ongoing conversation. We can get into these topics even in more depth as we go on. So make sure you're subscribing to the podcast. So a couple other tips would be... um, Like I said before, your souvenir shopping, the best time to do that really is later in the day when the park starts to get more crowded. Because typically what happens is it's the least crowded first thing in the morning, and then the crowds just build pretty steadily throughout the day. And then um, around dinner time, usually it sort of drops off. So your least crowded times are going to be first thing in the morning and the last thing at night. So the most crowded time is usually kind of that mid-afternoon, like three o'clock-ish. So that is a really good time to do your shopping because you don't have to stand in line to go shopping. And um, and especially if it's at the summertime, it's nice to get in the air conditioning at that time of day. And also, then you don't have to carry the stuff you bought around with you all day because it's getting towards the end of your day. So it's not I'm not saying you can't go in the shops in the morning because um, it is especially in the wizarding world, the shops are totally part of the um, park. I mean, they're part of the experience. So but I just mean that if you're going to buy your lanyard, for example, that you need, and you haven't um, already picked one up as you were exploring, then the mid-afternoon is a great time to head into the big universal store and um, find things like that. Okay, another tip is to stay calm. <laughs> so do the best you can to try to stay calm. I know it is crazy being in a theme park. It is super overwhelming all the bells and whistles going off and all this that's a lot going on um you're trying to coordinate you know getting through crowds you might have a group of people with you and you're having to uh kind of negotiate what you're doing just try to stay calm you're on vacation do the best you can you're probably not going to see everything But you're still, if you've got a plan, you're still going to be able to see your top choices. So just um, if you need to take a break, take a break. Think about this now so that you can sort of decide what tactics you can use when you start to feel overwhelmed or when people in your group start to feel like that. And have fun, you guys. Make sure you have fun. I mean, one of the things about going to a theme park is that you get to experience things that you would never get to experience in real life. I mean, who gets to um, fly on a broomstick (laughs) in their daily life, right? So remember, this is all about fun and new experiences and trying new things and taking some risks. So be open to that. Um, You know, try those new things and try to remember it to have fun. And I I really think that uh, it's amazing what you kind of 
discover about yourself when you have these experiences. I mean, maybe you are brave enough to ride that big roller coaster or turns out that, you know, the minions are the funniest thing ever. I don't know. But all I'm saying is give it a try. If you're if you're on the fence about getting on a ride or whatever, as long as it's not a health reason for not doing it, go and give it a try. You might find out that it is the best thing that you've done in a whole year, you know, so, so go for it. And that's really where I want to leave you too. I want you to um, be ready to be open to these experiences and have some of these logistical things done so that you don't have to worry about that and you can just go and have a good time. So that is the end of our seven episodes. And tomorrow is day eight. So I get the day off and you get to dream about Universal Orlando and you're a week closer to your vacation. So congratulations, you guys. One thing that I would love is if you have any questions or comments about what we've been talking about in these seven days, there is a comments section on the show notes on the website and, you know, hop on there and let me know what you think. Uh, what did you, you know, what questions do you have? Um, any feedback you have about uh, what you've heard so far on the podcast? Uh, it would be great to hear from you. So that's over at goinform.net slash seven. And coming up um, in a couple of episodes, I'm going to do another series, which will be 10 days to a better Disney World vacation. So if Disney World is also in your plans or you're thinking about it in terms of heading over to Orlando, make sure that you hit subscribe and subscribe to the podcast because um, those 10 episodes will be much like these um, going to take you through a lot of the basics and what to expect when you go to Disney World. So I would love to see you there too and um, have you join me for that. So stay tuned for those episodes. And then beyond that, we're going to be talking more about Orlando and um, and other places that I love to visit. So um, thanks again for joining me on these first seven episodes of the podcast. I'm really, really happy to have you here and to be working on this project. It's been great to have you join me. I hope you have a magnificent vacation.